go out there and enjoy yourself. Make the complete most of it. This is the trip of a lifetime. This is something you've saved for. This is something that you've dreamed of. Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about traveling solo. This can be related to female or male. I really, I'm very passionate about this because obviously I traveled for most of my travels solo. I left solo. Obviously I met people along the way, but you know, most of the time, the whole point is that you're not traveling with someone permanently, you know? So a little bit of backstory I'll quickly talk about i was actually meant to go traveling with my ex-partner if you've been following me for a while now you'll know that i did a video back a couple of years ago talking about how i want to travel and my boyfriend doesn't obviously i'm no longer with that partner but the whole video it's really important especially if you are with someone but you still want to travel solo so do check that out if that's your case but if not if you're just traveling solo then obviously you don't need to watch it but yeah so my backstory is that i was meant to travel with my ex-partner so for a while, for about two years, I thought I was going to be traveling with someone. And then unfortunately, he changed his mind last minute. So I came to the conclusion of this is my dream. This is something I've wanted to do for a very, very long time. I'm still going to go forward and do it. And whether it be solo or not, like I knew by this point, okay, I need to really think about this now. I am actually going to be traveling solo and no longer with someone. So I need to really, you know, get used to this. So yeah, I had about a year to kind of adjust to the fact that I'm going to be traveling solo. And I will admit it was quite a tough year. It was tough in many ways. Um, that I won't go into details about. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was a bit tough, but you know, now I've been traveling for over a year. I've been to nine countries and most of them I left on my own. I went on my own and yeah, arrived in the country on my own, made my own friends. So I'm gonna go through 10 tips and then there's one bonus tip at the end and we'll talk about what it's like to travel solo and also prepare yourself to travel solo. My head looks so funny. Oh, I look like I've got such a big head. Before I get into the tips, I just want to talk about the fact that you're never actually really alone when you travel unless you make yourself alone. So when you go backpacking, this is mainly backpacking or actually it could be related to anything, but my experience has been backpacking. So you're never really alone. If you make friends and you're staying in places where there's many people, you're always gonna have people around you. So therefore you're never gonna be alone. And most people ask you to actually come out and go for a dinner or go for drinks, all of that stuff. So if you actually want to be alone, you have to make yourself alone. Like you truly do. You know, if you're in a hostel and there's many people, you kind of have to go out on your own because you choose to, because most of the time people are gonna be with you. So, there has been a few times on my trip where I felt like, okay, I really want to have some alone time now and I'm gonna make myself have alone time. So just know, even though you're traveling solo, you're never really alone. So now I wanna get into the top 10 tips of traveling solo, male or female. Tip number one, pre-travel prepping. So by this, I mean, before you actually leave your country, I recommend highly that you put yourself in a scenario or in situations where you are alone. By this, I mean going out for dinner on your own, going to the cinema on your own, even if it's just going to visit family if they live in another town or city over, then you travel up there on your own, just drive up or get the train. If you're from the UK like me, you could get a plane up to Scotland. You're putting yourself in a situation where you're gonna be on your own, but you're in your own country, so you might feel a little bit more safe and a lot less anxious. So if you do that prior to actually traveling, it gets you kind of ready for when you actually leave and you go to another country, you'll have more confidence in being in your own company. For me, I did this quite a lot. I would go out for walks on my own for like long walks. I went for an Indian on my own once, and it was so funny because it was the first time I'd ever done it and I walked in and everyone was staring at me. They were really confused as to why I was there on my own. And I was in a town that wasn't where I was from. I was actually doing this course down south and I could have ordered takeout. And I thought, do you know what? I'm not gonna do that. I'm actually gonna sit in and I'm gonna eat inside the restaurant. And the people in the restaurant were asking me questions as to why I was on my own because they found it unusual that there was a young female in there on her own eating an Indian. Like, I just thought it was quite funny, but I felt really powerful and really confident because of that, but it boosted my confidence. So I really, really recommend doing that. Whether it's walking, going for food, going to the cinema, go to your local pub down on your own and go for a glass of wine, you know? Just little things like that really, really helps prepare you for your trip. So tip number two, maximum, <laughs> what? 
no. So tip number two, stay in hostels. Now I recommend this because I've been backpacking. Everyone in hostels are there for the same reason. They wanna meet people, it's cheaper. There's more of a vibe there. You can find hostels that do games, that do activities. Certain hostels have activities so that people actually do connect and do interact with each other. So that's really beneficial. And that's the best way to meet people personally, I think. I've stayed in places where it's kind of like private rooms because I felt like I needed a private room every now and then you do. Even when you stay in a hostel, I always stayed in mixed dormitories. I occasionally stayed in a female dorm, but that was mainly because I knew if I was staying in a female dorm, I'd be staying in there because I wanted a bit more peace and quiet and it wasn't as dirty and I'm not gonna lie. Sorry lads, sorry lads, I'm sorry, but you are messier and you are louder than females. And let me tell you, I've been in female dorms and they're so much cleaner and quieter. Girls just seem to like know, you know? In hostels, you can stay in private rooms, you can stay in mixed dormitories, and you can stay in all female dorms. And it's the same for males. You can stay in all male dorms. Obviously, I have not done that, but it all goes by your preference. Personally, I've found that being in a mixed dormitory, I've actually met more people. Whereas like in a female dorm, I've not actually really met as many people because most of the time I find when you go into a female dorm, everyone's in there to try and just have a bit of peace and quiet. And also, obviously, if you stay in a private room, if you want to meet people, you have to go and sit in the community area and actually try and talk and interact with people. And on top of staying in a hostel, don't book too many nights because honestly, whilst I was in Asia, there was some times where I stayed in hostels and I'd booked three nights in advance and I regretted it because I went there and I didn't like the hostel or I didn't find that I was vibing with the people there or there wasn't any people there or the hostel was just not very nice. You've kind of paid for it. Now, if I went back in time, I would have just left, but because at the time I was like, no, I paid for it, I need to save my money. I just stayed, but personally, I think if you're gonna stay in a hostel, just book maybe one or two nights maximum because you can just leave then. And also, if you're worried about the fact that, you know, if I don't book in advance, I'm not gonna get a spot. When you arrive there and you're checking in, just say to the people that are on reception, I might want to extend my stay, is that possible? And if they say no, you need to book in advance than book in advance. There's so many times I've stayed in a hostel where I've just booked, you know, as and when, like I know my time's coming up, I go up and I book two more nights, please. It's usually totally fine, but yeah, just bear that in mind. I think that's a top, top tip for hostel stays. So tip number three, talk to people. So this goes with the hostel state, but even besides the hostel state, talk to people. If you are kind of nervous about being on your own, but you really, really want to make friends, you just have to speak to people. You've just got to go up and ask a question. But I really recommend if you're going to walk into a hostel dormitory, say hello if there are people in there. Say hi, maybe even ask their names. And most of the time you get chatting and it's fine. Or even if you have a shared area where, you know, you can wash your hands and brush your teeth and whatnot. Usually when you're there, other people brushing their teeth as well. So you can talk to people at that time. Or even if there's kitchen in your hostels then speak to people in the kitchen I found that kitchen talk is the best when you're staying in Australia and also I would imagine New Zealand as well because you know you can cook your own food in these countries whereas in Asia there's not really a kitchen so most of the time there's like chilling out areas or even if there's a pool that's a really good place to start speaking to people but if you're not speaking to people in hostels, then just speak to people when you're out. If you're walking down a street market and you know, you're looking at something that you quite like and someone else is doing the same, you just say, oh, like, I really like what you're looking at. That's really nice. And just like start communicating with people, even if you communicate with the locals, like that's even better because the locals are so happy to have you there because you're in their country, you're exploring, you know, and if you get talking to the locals and ask, oh, do you know any good spots that you can recommend for me to go and visit? And they'd be so happy to tell you, you know, maybe the language barrier might be a bit off, but still, at least you've tried. And if you do speak to locals, try and learn some of their words, like, hello, thank you, how are you? You'll find as well that some locals really want to learn English if you speak English. So if they want to learn English, really do help them because they're so appreciative of the fact that you've just helped them learn a few words or you're just helping them have a conversation. Sometimes they just want to have a conversation in English to see if they they can communicate well. So don't be intimidated if a local person asks you that. So yeah, talking to people is obviously the best thing if you really want to meet people. <laughs> obviously, there's no other. Oh, actually, also, if you feel like you haven't really had a chance to communicate well with the people in your room or in your hostel or out 
just out and about, then booking a tour with the hostel or booking a tour in general, just with any travel agents around the country that you're in. Whenever you go on this tour, you're gonna meet people. I did it before I, I was in Krabi in Thailand and I was having really, really bad luck with the hostels that I was staying in. I couldn't, I just couldn't find hostels that had people in the room. It was so weird. Like nobody would be in a hostel dormitory and there's like a 10 bed dorm and there's just me. It was just so bizarre. So I just got to this hostel and I thought, you know what, I can't go on like this. I, I really want to make some memories of people. I want to make some friends. So I booked a day tour and everyone that was there were couples except for me. And I was just like, for God's sake, because couples are fine when you meet them. Like they're great. They're great fun. But sometimes it's like you want to meet someone that's just a solo traveler like you because you can relate so much to them and you don't want to be like third wheeling or just, you know, like be like, oh, can I hang out? Because sometimes they just want their own privacy. But anyway, it was a really nice day. I spoke to everyone and it was me. I was the one that spoke to everyone. I was the one that was like pushing on a conversation because sometimes people are too shy. And if you just have that in you to just to start a conversation, it gets so much easier as time goes on. So yeah, that's one of my top tips of traveling solo. Tip number four, confidence. And this can go with anything. So confidence in talking to people, confidence in just walking around the city or the town or the village that you're in. I wanna start with confidence in regards to talking to people because I've just been speaking about talking to people in my last tip. So have the confidence to start the conversation. Have the confidence to engage with people or lock eye contacts with people or even just tell someone you like what they're wearing because that starts this conversation. Like for example, a lot of people even had confidence towards me. People would approach me and ask me about my hair and I liked that because it started up a conversation and they had the confidence to come over and do that and then vice versa I had the confidence to speak to someone about asking them if they know any good spots around the area or what's the beach like or you know where's the best bar or something like that you know just having the confidence to do that and when I mean confidence in the other sense of being in the city and walking around is having the confidence how many times do I want to say confidence so when you're walking around the city you want to show that you're confident Act like you've been there before, like you know what you're doing, that you've been down this road before, you know where you're going. If you act like that, that confident, <laughs> people aren't gonna assume that you've only just got there, you know? And the reason I say that is because, you know, you hear stuff online that, you know, some places aren't safe. I'm not saying that places aren't safe, but at least if you're walking around with confidence, people aren't gonna see you as a new tourist. If you are lost, there is apps that you can get that are offline apps, which I will do a whole video about best apps for traveling. But but offline app maps are really good. But if you don't want to look obvious that you're looking at your map and you're kind of, oh, I don't know where I am. Don't show it on your face. Don't show it in your body language. Just be like, no, it's okay. I'm going to find my way back. It will be fine. If you don't want to show it and you want to kind of step yourself aside so you can actually look at your phone, just go into a shop and just check on the maps me and just see where you are. And then when you come out of that shop, you can go that way. But sometimes I like to, if it's daytime, if it's daytime, just remember that. I put my headphones in and I'll watch the maps me and it kind of looks like I'm listening to music or listening to a podcast so it's kind of different but yeah just express confidence in your body language you know and also verbally that's really important when you're traveling solo tip number five is be flexible this is kind of like a question mark one it really depends on whether you have a long-term trip or a short-term trip if you have a shorter trip and you can't really be flexible and you've planned everything in advance then this doesn't really apply to you but being flexible in a sense where you have a lot of time is if you meet people and you make really good friends with them, they might wanna do something that you wouldn't have even thought of doing or you know you didn't have the confidence to go on your own and they might want you to come with them. So if you're flexible, you can change your plans and I feel like that's really important because you will do things that you never actually thought you would do. I had this scenario happen to me also whilst I was in Thailand and I wanted to go to Rayleigh Beach and a couple of people that I met in a bar actually, my really good friends, Bex and Reese, <laughs> and then also Maddie, I met Bex and Reese in a bar and I was going to go to Rayleigh Beach on my own and then I went to the bar the next day and they were there and they said that they wanted to come with me and I was like great I was like this is great and the next day when we were going to Rayleigh Beach one of the girls in my room which her name is Maddie she decided to come along with us and it was just she was so flexible that she didn't want to stay in that hostel for that night so she decided to just come with us so she came over to Rayleigh Beach with us and we stayed there the night all of us and it was such a 
good time, you know? And then when I was gonna stay on Rayleigh Beach one more night and then go to PP Islands, but Bex, Reese, and Maddie were all coming back to Krabby. So they were like, just come back with us. You can go there another time. And I thought, do you know what? I will. So we came back together. We had another couple of nights in Krabby. And then we all decided to go to PP together, which was even better. You know, like we had this really lovely group and this lovely vibe and we just had such a good time. And I'm so glad that I did that. And that was just purely because I decided to be flexible and so did they. Like all of us as a group of four decided to be super flexible and we just adjusted our plans around each other and we just had the best time. So I really recommend doing that. That's really, you know, a really, it's like a, a tip only if you, you know, you can be. So, but just bear that in mind, even if you've got a shorter trip and you haven't booked anything, but you feel like doing something else instead, then do it, you know, go with your intuition. I'm not gonna hold my hands up anymore because I'm gonna run out of fingers. Actually, no. So tip number six be sensible. So being sensible, I mean this by don't go out at night on your own, okay? If you're nervous about a place, the best thing is if you arrive in a place on your own and you're a little bit nervous still, and you haven't fully built up your confidence and you're on your own, then just don't go out at night. Be sensible in the choices that you make when you're going out into the city or out into the village, right? So... <coughs> Excuse me. It's basically just using your common sense in where you are. So like I said, don't go out at night. And also what I used to try and do, if I was traveling from one place to another in that country by a bus or taxi, I would always travel before it got dark. Because if you arrive in a place that you've never been before and it's dark, you don't know where you are, it's kind of a little bit more nerve wracking. Now over time of my traveling, I kind of didn't follow through with this. I would arrive in places at night, but that was because I literally had no choice. But yeah, booking your flight so you arrive there in the daytime. I feel like that's just common sense. Another example I want to use is let's say you've gone out with a couple of friends and you're at a bar. Just try not to walk home by yourself if you don't feel safe. This is like just being sensible about the whole situation. If you don't feel safe in the area that you've been in, then don't leave that bar by yourself. Always see if someone can come with you or wait until someone can come with you. And don't let anybody go off on their own either because I feel like that would be, you know, as long as someone's there, it's, it's important. But if you have no choice and you you really want to go home because for example let's say you just got you felt sick and you were like i need to go home i got a headache then tell someone so at least try and find a way to at least tell your friends or i always did this at the beginning of my trip and i used to message my family i have a family whatsapp group i would message them and say that i'm in this hostel i'm going to be here for a couple of days and then if i extended i would tell them as time went on i kind of didn't bother doing that but that's because you gain your confidence so you don't really feel like you need to do it anymore but at the start this is important you know so yeah just tell Tell people where you are and at least then you can even say before you go out that night i'm going out tonight i'm going to be going out for a couple of drinks with some friends so this is where i'm going i'll let you know when i'm home but honestly some places it's made to sound bad but it's not you go to asia you go to these countries don't think it's as bad as what everyone all the media says it is because it's really not tip number seven what goes alongside this is intuition and gut feeling for example in the last tip it was using your common sense telling people and being sensible about the choices that you're making but on top of that it's using your intuition and following your gut if something doesn't feel right just get out of that situation as soon as possible i believe truly following your gut and your intuition is always the best way because you can feel energies okay even if you're not a spiritual person you don't need to be spiritual to feel energies okay it's just you can feel a scenario and you can feel whether this doesn't feel right you can usually get that with someone if you're hanging around someone that you don't really you're not really vibing with you can feel that it's that's your gut and that's your intuition telling you that this person isn't the sort of person that i want to associate myself with or be around it's the same in any kind of scenario okay trust your gut and your intuition follow that. If you are in a hostel and you just feel like the vibe there is not good, you don't feel safe there, then get out of there. Just don't stay there. I know many people that went and stayed in hostels that didn't like it. So they left the next day. They didn't even care about the money. It's so cheap there anyway. I'm using Asia as an example because that's mainly where I stayed. But just trust your gut and your intuition and just get out of there. So tip number eight, say no and be stern. Okay, so this kind of comes alongside confidence, but you have to learn to say no. When you get to some countries, it's very very different. If you're English like me or you're from like the western side of the world, you're used to people kind of leaving you to your own business wherever you're going or if you're going and looking around a market, no one's going to be in your face and like buy this, buy this, buy this. When you're in some countries, they want to make money and they, whether it's from buying one of their products, whether it's 
getting in a taxi, whether it's renting a bike, it's literally anything. If you don't feel that you want that, if you don't feel that you want them near you, you have to learn to say no. And when you first go traveling, you're kind of a little bit like, oh, I don't want to like offend anyone. I don't want to be rude. And I'm the same. I don't like being rude to people. I don't like me making people feel uncomfortable and I really don't like conflict. So at first I was a little bit polite about it, but sometimes some people can be very in your face. That is just down to culture. They're not doing it to intimidate you. If you feel intimidated, you have to say no you have to be like no because some people will follow you down the street they'll try and pressure you into to buying things or coming into their bar if you don't want to do it say no it's okay to say no and this is in all sorts of walks of life you know if you want to say no say no don't say yes just because you want to make that person happy it's okay to say no okay it's okay you just have to be stern and have that confidence to go no thank you what really helps is learning how to say no thank you in the language of the country that you're in because if you say no thank you in their language they actually tend to go okay quicker but if you just say no thank you in English, they actually seem to push it more. But yeah, just learn to say no and be okay with it. It's okay. Honestly, it's okay to be stern and really tell them because this is your money, your choice. Say no, just say no. Tip number nine. This is getting hard now. Look at my little finger. Tip number nine pack light okay so i can tell you firsthand that you don't need half as much stuff as you take with you i actually only took a 40 liter backpack which is the smallest you can kind of get on as hand luggage so i never took mine on as hand luggage because mine always weighed over seven kilos but i actually took a lot of stuff that i really didn't actually need there was a lot of things that i bought that was so essential to my whole wardrobe let's say in my backpack but honestly wherever you go you can buy these things let's say that you're going on your first solo backpacking trip and you're going to be away for three months okay pack what you want to pack literally half it again go through it again really think about what you need there were some things that i took traveling with me that i never even wore and i ended up just putting it in a clothing bin or giving it to someone because i never wore it and Honestly, like when I went traveling, most of the stuff that I saw in some of these shops, I liked more than what I actually had in my backpack. So I wanted to buy stuff, but because my backpack was so full, I couldn't buy any more things. So what I recommend is actually taking not a lot of stuff, especially if you wanna buy some of the clothes from that country, because one, they are so cheap. Two, they're so unique and you're gonna go home and have clothes that people aren't gonna have, you know? It's kind of nice to have quirky stuff, I like that. And also it's really beautiful to buy things from them countries as a souvenir, you know? At least it's not just an ornament, it's something that you can actually wear and it reminds you of that place that you bought it in and of that person that you bought it off and knowing that you're helping that person out. Like I think, I think personally, buying clothes from those countries is the best thing. I actually found as my time went on traveling, all the stuff, let's not say all the stuff, most of the stuff that I had taken with me, firstly I grew out of because things just, I ate a lot. <laughs> and secondly, I didn't find that style was me anymore. Like I didn't really like what I had. So I wanted to be different, a little bit quirky. So I ended up going out once or twice, a few times, and I bought quite a few new things. And when I bought them, I came back, I went through my backpack and I got rid of the stuff that I wasn't wearing and replaced it with this stuff. So don't make my mistake and take loads of stuff with you. I actually didn't take that much. Funny enough, I didn't take that much. I'll probably end up coming home with more stuff than I actually went out with. Um, I thought I was a minimalist definitely not. I kind of regretted that. So just go with less stuff because you can buy some really, really cool pieces out there. So really honestly pack light. And plus you don't want to carry that heavy ass backpack around on your back with you. Like it's not comfortable. It's not okay. It benefits you in so many ways. And tip number 10, padlocks. Always carry padlocks. Okay. I really think this is really important personally myself because i have been in a hostel where someone got a lot of their money stolen but that was her own fault to be honest and that's a whole nother story in itself so some hostels you'll go to and they won't have lockers if they have lockers great but it's not just about that you need padlocks because some of the lockers don't even have a lock they you have to have your own padlock to lock your stuff away and if you're carrying things like a camera a laptop a phone a gopro 
anything that's expensive, you want to make sure that, you know, it's safe. So I bought two pad locks, only two with me, and they were the combination locks, which are really, really good locks. So I only bought two with me. I had one for my main backpack and one for my small backpack. My small backpack carried all my electronic equipment in it. And my main backpack didn't actually have anything that I was worried about being stolen. I just wanted my stuff safe. Personally, as just who I am. So whenever I was going on flights, I would always lock my main backpack up and that would obviously go under the hold in the airplane. My backpack on the front, which had all my electrical equipment on it, was actually a pack safe backpack. So it was actually anti-theft. And I specifically bought that backpack for that reason. There was a few hostels that I stayed in that didn't have any lockers at all, which is obviously a bit of a pain, especially if you're carrying a lot of expensive equipment with you. So what I did is I would obviously lock that main backpack up that had all the expensive equipment in it. So both my backpacks were locked. So if anybody saw my backpacks on the floor, they were locked, they couldn't get in them regardless. So I think that that's very important if you wanna keep your stuff very safe. Most of the places I stayed in, it was completely fine. It was just that one place that someone got money stolen and that was because she gave someone her key to put something back in her locker. They obviously rummaged through her stuff and stole her money from her. So don't give your combination away to anybody. Don't give your key to anybody. You'll know if you trust someone. She obviously thought she trusted that person and that backfired. So please just don't make that mistake because hearing her crying was the most horrible thing to wake up to. I felt so sorry for her. and also also, she carried all of her money on her. Apparently that was all of her money. Because I was talking to her afterwards and she, for some reason, carried all of her cash for her whole trip on her. Which I thought, I don't think that's a good idea. But I'm gonna do a video about how to keep your money safe whilst traveling. So keep an eye out for that one. What's the word? Last but not least, and this is kind of like a bonus tip, enjoy yourself. Just really, truly go out there and enjoy yourself. Make the complete most of it. This is the trip of a lifetime. This is something you've saved for. This is something that you've dreamed of. Make the most of it. Please don't make my mistake. And for the first month, I basically drank beer every single day for the first whole month of my travels. And I didn't explore as much. All I did was I would get drunk. I'd wake up hungover. I wouldn't really have the strength or the energy to go out and do stuff. So I didn't really see a lot of what I wanted to see. So please don't make that mistake. Please go to the country that you're traveling to. Really, really make the most of it. Before before you go to this country, look up on Google the best things to do around those areas of the places that you're gonna visit and just make a list and get up every day or every other day and do something, you know, because it will make your trip so worthwhile and so worth it. Get yourself immersed in that culture, you know, learn a few words. All of these things are so beneficial to your trip. If you're going on your own somewhere, ask someone in your room if you want them to come with you. If you want someone to come with you, then do it. Ask them because you're gonna have so much fun making memories with people and honestly like I have traveled a lot on my own when I mean on my own I have been on my own for like three weeks at a time sometimes and that's because I have chosen to do road trips on my own basically if you want someone to come with you just ask honestly people are always so happy and you know appreciative and grateful that you've gone oh would you like to come with me I'm actually gonna go to this temple today it would be really nice if you join they're probably in that mindset of like oh I don't know what to do today and because you've just approached them and said oh do you want to come they'll be like yeah sure actually I've done that. I've done that before. People have asked me and I've gone ahead and done stuff with them and I've had a really fun time. So honestly, enjoy every moment. Obviously, if you want to have a drink, that's fine. But just please like make the most of that country. Don't let alcohol stop you from going out and enjoying yourself and enjoying what you've got and what you've worked all your time for. Okay. Wow. This is 42 minutes long, that's crazy. So that was my tips, I hope you enjoyed that. I just wanna close this off with a little reason as to why I love solo traveling so much. I actually found that I have found this connection to myself that I never ever had experienced before. And I feel like solo travel is so beneficial in so many ways for you to grow as a person. You find out what you truly love, what you truly desire in life, what gets you ticking, what doesn't get you ticking, you know. You meet the most amazing people that you connect with in ways that you wouldn't ever imagine, right? You can meet someone and spend seven days with them and it feels like you've known them for a lifetime. And you know that person is gonna be in your life for the rest of your life. I have met so many people that I literally speak to nearly every day and I love them so dearly, like with all my heart. Honestly, it's been the most incredible thing traveling on my own. I honestly believe that if I traveled with 
the person I was meant to travel with before, I don't think it would have been the same experience. I wouldn't have done half the stuff that I chose to do. You're kind of restricted when you're traveling with someone because you kind of have to come to an agreement of what you're doing that day. So if you're on your own, you can just do whatever you want. You're so free. You can get up when you want. You can eat when you want. You can go wherever you want. You don't have to come to an agreement. You just do whatever you want. You know, that there's nothing more freeing than that. And you truly, honestly, connect with yourself on such a deep level. And I just think it's the most beautiful and most empowering and fantastic thing you can ever give yourself a chance to do. If you don't have the opportunity to do a long-term trip like I did, then don't do a long-term trip. Say if you're in a relationship, for example, and you don't wanna travel for a whole year or a month or three months, right? Go on a weekend trip on your own. If you're in an area, for example, if you're from Australia, you could just go over to Bali for a week by yourself. Or if you're from Europe, you can travel somewhere in Europe really, really cheap by yourself. You don't have to meet people. You don't have to talk to people. If you don't want to speak to people, that's fine. You can actually just go and have a good time on your own, explore a city on your own. I've done it so many times, guys, honestly. I've created so many memories that only myself will ever know. Like, I've done the solo. Now I'd like to try it with someone else, but it's just gonna take someone that wants to do the same things as me maybe you know a future partner of mine might really want to do it with me which would be incredible um but obviously that's way into the future and it's not something that i'm you know considering doing at any time soon but it would just be nice to do that i think to experience both sides of it is really important and it just builds your confidence it boosts your confidence you know you feel like a better person when you go to a place so even if you've got to go to a new city in your country you don't feel as intimidated by it you're kind of just like oh okay well i've done this before it's fine it's like getting a plane on your own oh, i've done it before it's fine being on my own is so normal to me now i actually love my own company i really truly love my own company and i feel that it's really important to not feel constantly reliant on someone else as well rely on just yourself if you rely on just yourself there's nothing more empowering and important than that and there's nothing more important than self-love Self-love is the ultimate love. And if you love being around yourself, you're gonna just be so happy all the time. And anybody that comes into your life that wants to join you on this little journey of traveling, of just being on your own, then great, you know, you can make memories with these really cool, beautiful people. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. It's been a long awaited video, but now that I'm coming to the end of my whole backpacking trip, I feel like now's the time to start pumping out all of this footage regarding solo travel. So I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. It's been long awaited and I really appreciate you sticking all the way to the end. Please stay tuned and keep an eye on my channel. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button if you really like this video. Lots more travel videos are coming on this channel. Channel. I have got so many ideas. I'm well experienced in this kind of area. I'm coming to the end of my backpacking trip now and a couple of weeks I will actually be flying home for the time being and I'm going to be home for a while. So I've got many, many, many ideas to help you prepare for your trip. Love you all so, so, so much. Thank you all again and take care of yourselves. Peace.